I went on Ryan Hensley's show this morning. He does an eight o'clock wake up show on his channel. It's phenomenal. He asked, he put me on the spot and said what I thought the uh, final score would be. And I said, it should be 31, 17 Niners, but it's not, I don't, I'm not going to make that my final prediction because should and, and reality are two different things. And there's still, and let, until I see different, I still see a team that's underperforming and that hasn't figured it out on offense. I know a lot of people feel that Christian McCaffrey has taken this offense to another level. He's a good player, but I haven't seen this offense go to another level with the exception of that one game against the Rams who always flop against the Niners in the regular season. So they, sc- they should score 30 points. Will they? I don't know. I mean, there's reasons to say no. Uh, they um, didn't, but they scored 17 last time they faced the Cardinals last year. They faced, they, they lost 31 to 17 to Colt McCoy with no DeAndre Hopkins last year. Uh, but just more than that, I mean, forget the fact that the Niners haven't really found an identity on offense yet this season. They're still searching. But this whole trip to Colorado feels like a, it may have caused more harm than good. The way the Niners were talking about it privately up there, like, to, you know, around us, anytime you'd meet anyone in the organization, it was kind of like, yeah, you know, <laughs> no one really saw this snow coming. I mean, really, what are the odds? Like two days of the year that we're coming, it snows. I mean, it's going to be hot. It's going to be warm again in a few days. Like. They kind of just chalked it up to bad luck and sort of help, hoped that the work they did would sort of be beneficial, even though it's incredibly inconvenient to have to practice in the snow. And so I'm wondering, like, will – did that – are they exhausted? They may be acclimated to the it, uh, elevation, but are they exhausted? and? How prepared are they for this game? That's the thing. They stayed in Greenbrook. They stayed in West Virginia for the Falcons game. They didn't seem prepared. They didn't seem fresh. And they, they stayed out there because they had played in Charlotte the week before. And they didn't want to go back and forth. They felt, you know, two weeks of flying back and forth would be exhausting. Well, so that you, you, you drove to West Virginia and stayed over there and you came down to Atlanta and you looked exhausted. And what's worse is you looked exhausted the next week, too, against the Chiefs. Like, yeah, the Chiefs are better than the Niners, but are they that much better? The Niners put up no resistance. The defense was not on the field. It felt like that was a hangover game. It was the effects of them staying on the East Coast and doing an extended trip. I mean, you already have a lot of – you can see that as cutting down travel. But at the same time, like, it ruins your routine. So you might be fresh, you might not, but how prepared are you for the game? Professional athletes are all creatures of habit. They do the same routine all the time. They want to. That's what you're trying to do. The reason the Cardinals didn't go anywhere this week, they said, was to not disrupt their routine. The Niners did, and they talked about it. And they said, you know, it's tough to disrupt your routine. I mean, the entire schedule of what they do day to day was disrupted. First day, they had to practice in the snow. Next day, they had to practice it on turf for a game that's going to be outdoors on grass. So it, it doesn't feel – the Niners aren't giving off vibes that they're as prepared as they should be. Although, they took the extra effort. You know, they, they made the extra trip. They seem more dedicated, more serious about the game than the Cardinals. But you wonder if all this – like, if this is just busy work that the Niners did. Was this the right – was this the right thing to do? And I think the final irony, and it's a tragic irony, but it, like the nine, why didn't they just go to Mexico City early? Kyle was asked that question. He said, basically, you know, we know the facilities in Colorado Springs are good, and we knew people there. We don't know anyone in, in Mexico. We don't know anyone we trust. We don't know the facilities. So basically, he's like, oh, he's a little sketched out. He's like, I know Cabo. I talked to Alfredo Gutierrez. He didn't know anyone. So what am I? What are we gonna do? Okay. All right. All right. Um, but the irony is that when they were in Colorado Springs, there was a shooting in Colorado Springs. So if you're going, if you didn't go to Mexico City because of safety, well, there was a safety issue in Colorado Springs. I mean, to put it mildly. So I'm thinking next time the Niners want to prepare for a Mexico City game, you either stay home or you go to Mexico City. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I think the Niners are going to once again play down to their opponents and mess around on offense and score a- around their season average which is like 22. So since they 
got a, they're a little bit more acclimated to the elevation. I'm going to give them 23. I'm going to say they're going to win 23 to 17. I don't have a question with the defense. The defense, I think, even though they had to go to Colorado, they might be exhausted in this elevation. I think the defense is going to show up like they normally do. Maybe Colt McCoy will have a couple of nice drives early on in the game like Justin Herbert did. But essentially, after halftime, I don't think Arizona is going to be able to do too much. The question is the offense. Are they ever going to find a rhythm and an identity? I don't know. If they will, I, I, if they do, I just don't anticipate it happening at the Air Force Academy. To me, that felt like a waste of time. You know, like when you you plan something and you're doing it and you're like, man, I, <laughs> this is just not what I envisioned. We should have done an audible. That's what the Niners should have done. I don't think that's what they envisioned at all. 23-17 Niners. Dave Barclay says, what up, Grant? Been in Cali this last week. Missed some shows, but glad to see you this morning. Keep up the good work, bud. Stayed in Bodega Friday. Well, that's really nice. Bodega Bay, super nice. Isn't that the uh, where um, Alfred Hitchcock did one of his movies? Was it The Birds? Where like the birds just swoop down and attack you out of nowhere? That's kind of the scariest movie of all time if you really think about the possibility of that happening. And will we beat Colt McCoy? Yeah, you freaking better. You better. V says, players didn't seem on board with the Colorado trip. Just use normal face masks at practice. LOL. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I don't think they seem super on board with this trip. I don't think they seem super on board with the uh, West Virginia trip. I mean, these are it's a different team than the one in 2019. That 2019 team was young and hungry and eager to please the coach. This team is fat and satisfied and rich. And there's a lot of guys that probably didn't want to spend a few days at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs when it's snowing. I mean, would you rather stay in a hotel room or sleep at home with your wife? Take the wife out of the equation. Some of these guys aren't married. Would you rather sleep in a hotel room or sleep in your freaking mansion that you have because you make $20 million a year? You know, I mean, guys like Elijah Mitchell, whatever, whatever, coach, I'm trying to get that contract, but... Guys who make more money than Kyle, they, they could be like, hey, what are we doing? Just saying. They, they're much more free to speak out and voice their opinion because they've been paid to do so. They're team leaders. Looking clean, brother, like the cut. Thank you. It's the Mexico City haircut. I might have to – I took it my, – my wife likes it too. She said, take a picture and show your barber, which means I guess she didn't like my previous haircut. Fair. fair. I feel like I – don't, I don't know if my hairline's receding, but I'm, all, I'm definitely hitting 35, and I shouldn't have anything that looks like a comb over at all, so – Trying to just be honest with my hairline. <laughs> I think the loss to Atlanta was more about the injuries. Almost every start in the defense was injured. Possible. Possible. Uh, that's And if the Niners win big today, we could go back and, and read history that way. It's also possible that trip to West Virginia was a bust. That it backfired. And the thing that's troubling about that, if that's true, then it was a two-week backfire. That you could argue the Niners' last two losses were directly connected to, to that West Virginia trip. They were rolling. Then they go to West Virginia unnecessarily to be fresh and prepared and focused. Come in and lose by 14. 14 to Atlanta. I understand losing to Atlanta like, like on the last play. 14, they got dominated by Atlanta. Their defense looked legitimately bad those two weeks. 28 to Atlanta and then 40-something, 40 44. The defense looked awful. I know there were injuries, but still, this is a defense that plays at a high level no matter really who's on the field. And since they got over that Greenbrier hangover, the defense has been good again. So I'm curious. You know, what did I say? I don't question the defense. Well, if I'm right, if it's true that this trip to Colorado Springs is going to have a – is going to tire out the team, well, you're going to see it in the defense then, right? They're not going to have that same energy – they're not going to have the same speed. And eventually, those long drives chasing screens left and right will take a toll. I hope that doesn't happen. Well, actually, I don't care. I don't root for the Niners. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, beyond Reasons ENT says, it's astonishing that a pro football team doesn't have any contacts in another country. Why didn't he just call Goodell for his contacts? Typical. I feel like at this point, you can't really um, believe a word he's saying, man. It started off with him saying they lost uh, Jeff Wilson Jr. No, you traded him. Like that's a dishonest answer. Uh, and then when we asked about Trent Williams tipping plays, he didn't answer the question and said, he's good with Trent. And he said, he didn't know. Then we asked the offensive line. He said, he didn't know. Oh, I don't know about that. We asked the offensive line coach the next day and he goes, Oh yeah, I've been talking to Trent about that for a long time. And here's why Trent does it. And here's why he shouldn't do it. 
So I, Kyle just says anything at this point. Don't you can't give him the benefit of the doubt that he's not that he's being one hundred percent truthful at these press conferences. He's not under oath. He knows it. He just be saying things. Sean O'Leary says, "Rest easy, Grant." It's a widow's peak, not a receding hairline. Thank you. Sign of aging and maturity. I can say that because I'm about 10 years older and have the same. Yeah, I just saw some people like fighting about hairlines on Twitter today. And I was, I mean, this week, and I started uh, looking at my own really insecurely. So thank you for making me feel better.